Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is the first episode of Stages of Constructing a House. Welcome back to my channel, Diary of the Lady Engineer. My name is Nuta and I am a civil engineer by profession. If you have not yet subscribed to this channel, please do hit the subscribe button below and notification bell so that you get new updates on new topics every single week. Please do like the video as well. So ladies and gentlemen, today I'll be talking about the substructure. This is the part of the house that is below the ground and usually consists of the foundation. The foundation comprises the footing, columns in case of pad foundations, and build up walls. Don't worry about the types of foundations, I will talk about them in later videos. For now, let's just get to know the basics on substructures. So why the substructure anyway? This is the part of the building that withstands all the loads that are exited by the building itself which comprises the, the walls, the fixtures and fittings, the roof, as well as the, the forces and loads from the people and appliances. The first thing we do when working on the substructure is digging of trenches where the footing is going to be laid and walls or columns raised for the foundation of the house, as shown in this video. The footing is basically made of reinforced concrete which comprises Portland cement, river sand, stones and water which is then reinforced with steel either in form of heavy duty concourse or steel bars. After curing of the concrete footing, walls with concrete blocks start to be raised with reinforcement in form of block force steel wire. The blocks used vary in size according to the engineer's specification and they are linked together with mortar, which is a mixture of Portland cement and building sand. The reason for reinforcing any concrete works is so as to balance up the two types of forces it's usually subjected to. Every building is subjected to compressive and tensile forces which have to be withstood for stability. Concrete in itself is great at withstanding compressive forces while steel is great at withstanding tensile stresses, hence the combination. Compressive stresses have a squeezing effect on an object while tensile stresses have a pulling effect on an object. On stable ground, with well-distributed soil particles, the foundation trenches are usually at least 600 mm deep, whilst the width is at least three times that of the size of the block being used. For example, if 8-inch blocks whose width is 200 millimeters are being used for the foundation, then the width of the trench will be at least 600 millimeters. The width of the footing usually tallies with the trench size, while its thickness is according to the engineer's specification. In most instances, we use 150 to 200 millimeters thick footing for domestic buildings like a simple three-bedroom house. Once the walls are up to the specified height, they get plastered then backfilling with well-distributed soils like gravel is done. 
it's only after this business is finished that we get to deck the foundation with a concrete slab in preparation for erection of the superstructure which we will discuss in the next episode.